QuickBooks Online, pay bills form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to be selecting the option that has Intuit.com within it, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version and verifying that we're not a robot. Scrolling in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel. I'm current, currently at 125% on the zoom in. Noting that if we hit the cog up top, we're in the business view, not, I mean, sorry, we're in the accountant view, not the business view. We will be toggling back and forth between them periodically as we go. We're going to open two more tabs or duplicate those tabs to put reports in the major financial statement reports as we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it as that is thinking i'm going to right click again and duplicate again then as that is thinking i'm going to go to the middle tab go to the reports which under the accountant view is on the left hand side and then balance sheet should be one of our favorites as that's thinking i'm going to go to the tab to the right reports and then I'm going to be choosing the income statement or profit and loss report. These are our major two financial statement reports. I'm going to scroll up, change the date range. I'm going to do it manually by highlighting the date and then putting in 010122, which is January 1st, 2022, as easily typed as possible, tab, and then 123122, which stands for December 31st, 22, and tab. It populates then the dashes and we're going to run that report. Then I'm going to go back to the middle tab and scroll up to where the dates are. Do the same thing from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run the report to make sure it is updated. So that's the setup process we do every time. I'm going to go back to the first tab now. If I select the plus drop down, this is going to give us the major forms broken out by cycle. We've been looking at the uh, vendor cycle remembering that vendors specifically for the accounting terminology means that people that we are paying money ultimately going out for goods and services that we are purchasing we could do that on a cash based system as we purchase goods and services paying with a expense or check form these basically being two like forms that are decreasing the checking account or we could do the accrual process which we started with this time entering a bill and then we're going to be paying the bill so we entered a bill last time but let's just recap and enter the bill again now note that i've logged out of of the sample file and back into it so it shouldn't save my data most likely won't save my data as i log out and back into it so we're, we should have a fresh set every time we start a new presentation in general so i'm going to go into a bill let's enter a bill and then follow it through the process of paying the bill when we pay the bill we are in essence just paying it with like a check form but it will be marked off specially within the quickbooks system and it'll show like in our in our data in our transaction reports let's check it out let's enter a bill so i'm going to enter the bill again repeat of of what we did last time or a similar process i'm going to say this is going to be aaa i'm going to create a new vendor as we go and tab it's going to ask me to create it i'm just going to say that's all i need on the name so let's save that and then the address i'm not going to put anything different there the terms i'm going to say are net 15. that means the date that i'm entering the bill is here i'm just going to keep that date and then i'm going to say it's going to be due on uh 15 days later obviously if you have the bill you want to make sure that you enter the date for the due date of the bill so you can sort by due date and that's what we're going to do when we pay the bill shortly we're not going to add any tags and then we have our categories down below of either an expense item assigning it to an account usually an expense account but possibly a fixed asset account here or an item which is typically inventory i'm not going to deal with the inventory now we're going to just assign it to an account let's just say it was like the telephone bill i'm going to start typing in telephone bill it will start to populate if we have our chart of accounts set up properly also uh, we could set up a system where it could kind of memorize the last transactions in which case it might populate the uh, category for us automatically we might put a memo such as this is for the week ended blah blah right and might put a date there to give us more detail of the period that was covered that we paid uh with this particular bill that's a that's not a required field field clearly 
but good one to have. And then I'm just gonna make it for like $350. The billable item means that uh, we might pull it over if I hit the billable item then I can pull this over possibly to an invoice. We'll talk about the billable items later. The tax would only be applicable if it were billable because we're talking sales tax generally, at least in the United States. And then the customer would only be necessary if once again, you made the item billable. Remember, you could have multiple lines here as well that we talked about last time. What's this going to do? It's going to be increasing uh, the accounts payable. That's what a bill does. So we'll increase the accounts payable. The other side is going to go to the telephone expense. So we'll do that as of 1220. Okay. So let's go ahead and record it. So I'm just going to say drop down or rise up, save and close. And let's check out what happens just to verify going to our reports. Every time I record something, I like to go over here and just double check that it did what I think it should. Now over here, I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to scroll back up top and run the report again to refresh the, re re the report to have it up to date. And then I'm going to scroll down and say that should have uh, increased the AP accounts payable. I can drill back down from the end result to the source document, selecting this item and then scrolling down. There's the bill. I can then click on this. If I scroll back down, I can see the 350. I can click on this and go into the actual source document that we data input, which was the bill. Closing that back out. Notice we also see a list of the transaction type. This is quite useful when you're analyzing the reports. You can see it's a bill form. I know what bill forms do. They increase accounts payable and then they have an other side to them, typically an expense account, but possibly a fixed asset or inventory account, depending on the circumstances. But what I know for sure, hold on a second closing this out scrolling back up I got to go back this way going back to my report I know for sure that accounts payable is going to go up with bill is what I was trying to say the other sides on the income statement so I'm going to go to the income statement tab to the right and then run it close the hamburger the hamburger and then scroll down and we're going to say it went to that telephone expense down here we put it somewhere in the telephone scroll up a little bit where's the telephone there it is. They put it under utilities on the telephone. Okay. I wouldn't do that normally, but there it is. Let's go into there. So there we have it. And then again, we can drill back down to the source document. So two accounts are impacted. At least two accounts will be impacted every time we enter one of these forms, typically, because these are financial transactions. I'm going to go back. Remember, I'm using this back button up top as opposed to this back button. You might be able to use this one, but with, with QuickBooks, they basically have everything kind of inside the system. So you're usually better off not going to the browser back button, but, but finding out how to maneuver within the actual website design of the website. Uh, although again, sometimes you might find a use for that back button, but I find that they have everything kind of built into the, to the system here. Okay. So then if I go back to the balance sheet, then and scroll up, we also have the subsidiary ledger for the accounts payable that represents who we owe money to. We also want to know who we owe that money to. Now we could do this in a report format and that helps us to see the total tying out to this number, seeing that it is a subsidiary ledger. In other words, if I go to this tab to the right, right click on it, I'm going to duplicate it again to open another report. So I'm going to open it up again. And then I'm going to go down to the reports and we're going to go then I'll close the hamburger and scroll down to the reports for you owe what you owe type of item. And then last time we looked at the accounts payable aging, let's this time look at the vendor balance detail report, which is a similar report to the aging. We looked at it in a prior presentation, changing the dates. It's got all dates. That should be good. So we'll keep it there. And then we're going to say that, uh, so we've got, there is the total for AAA that we entered into the system. And here's the 350 up top. Now, if we go all the way to the bottom of this, it's breaking this information out by vendor. And we've got the total 195267. That amount should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. 195267. So we can break this out. We got to break it out by who we owe the money to. Now in practice, oftentimes we're going to be going to the internal reporting components to the left hand side here. I'm going to scroll back down a bit to 125. And we're going to go then to the expenses area. This is in the accounting 
uh, view. If we go into the expenses tab on the left hand side and uh, then we can go into the expenses, the bills and the vendors up top. So oftentimes we're going to go into here and be searching for, you know, those outstanding bills. So I'm going to hold down. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to close the hamburger. So you could go to the expenses tab here, which has basically transactions that are related to us paying the pain of the vendors, the vendor cycle or the money out cycle at the end of the cycle. And you could filter within here and say that you want to go to the bills, for example, and then you could go to the open bills and you could check the date range. You also have the overdue bills and so on and apply this and you could sort by bills or you could of course go just simply to the bills tab, which kind of takes you directly to, I'm going to go to, now I'm in the bills tab. I'm going to go to the unpaid items. So now we're in the unpaid bills, you know, directly. So there's a similarity between these items here. There's the AAA and the bills on the unpaid bills where we've got the this item down here. You could change the sort range uh, if you so choose and kind of sort which bills you need to be paid and you got the paid items. If we're sorting by an individual like vendor, then we can go into the vendor and in here, you also have another kind of sorting option where you could say, hey, I want to look at the open bills, for example. And then now you've got the broken out by the vendors. And this is another way that you could sort for pretty much, you know, the same kind of data. We have the option on the right hand side to uh, make a payment now, create uh, a bill and create an expense. So if I go into the AAA here, now I'm into this particular vendor, I see the detail down below, which is the bill. So this is the bill for that particular vendor. If I hit the drop down once again, I can mark as paid, uh, edit, uh, view, edit, and copy. If I want to go back, notice I have two hamburgers up top. I've got this, this one, which is the main hamburger. And then I've got like this little mini hamburger. So I can go to that one and I could go like back to the vendors here. So you kind of want to practice your navigation around in that area. So the next step in the process then would be to pay the bill. Now notice the little plus button is up here. So I could hit the plus button this way now, and I could go down to the pay bills or I could go into the, this individual if I'm looking at a particular vendor and I can hit the drop down here and I can say that I want to uh, make a payment, make payment, and then it goes into the bill payment. And this way it kind of refines down our choices and the bill payment form to this particular uh, vendor that we're paying. Now, oftentimes we might be uh, looking at all the bills that are kind of outstanding and selecting the bills that we want to pay. So we might be doing something more like I'm going to go to uh, my, let's go back to like my bills, my open bills here and then unpaid. I might be trying to sort all of my open bills here and then figure out, figuring out which ones I want to pay, which might be like the overdue bills for right? periodically. We might be doing that. And the other way that we can kind of see this, if I want to make multiple pay multiple bills at one time, instead of, instead of uh, entering them one at a time, I can hit the drop down on the plus button again. And we could say that we want to uh, pay bills. So we're going to say pay bills. Now it's going to open up another screen that, you know, is a pay bills screen, but it's not just selecting one bill down below. We now have multiple items that we could check off and be entering the transactions to paying multiple bills at one time. So this, if we look at this form, it's going to be in essence, a check type of form, but it might make multiple check or expense type of forms at the same type time or a credit card form, depending on whether you're paying with credit card or a bank account. So you got your payment account up top, which you could often you would use your checking account most likely, or you might have a credit card account. If it was a checking account, and then clearly the checking account would be going down like a check type form or expense form. It was if it was a credit card account that you are using, then you're going to it's going to have the same uh, decrease to the to the accounts payable, but the other side's going to increase the liability of the credit card. So let's go to the standard kind of checking account. And let's say that we make the payment, we'll say 12, 20, that's fine. It's going to have a check date. Now, if you don't have checks that you're actually printing and you're basically recording uh, electronic transfers or something like that, then you could simply, you know, delete the check number. 
if you are printing the checks and you want to actually print the checks. So in other words, if you actually are using checks, you might handwrite the checks in the small business, for example, and then you would want to mirror the check number, adding the check number here, or you could buy checks from the bank, which are still going to be pre-printed, and then you're going to have to print on them, you know, the added information for the check, but the check numbers will already be on the pre-printed checks, and then you're going to put them into the printer. So you're going to want the check number here to line up, and then you're going to mark it off as to be printed later, and then go through the printing process of the checks. Now I'm going to assume that we're not going to be printing them and we're not going to have a check number. So it's more like an expense type of, of form. And then we could select, say we're going to pick the AAA. And so now we've got the 350. We could select multiple of these items. Let's just select a couple of them here. And so if notice that if, if I was to only pay a partial amount of it, then I can show the partial amount of the payment that we're going to have. And then of course we would still have an amount that would still be due. So if I put like 500 here, we have the opening balance, 755, 500, and then we would still be owing, you know, the difference. And then here I'm going to be paying off the full 350. Now these are going to two different vendors. So this is going to not be like one transaction. I'm creating in essence, two forms at the same time to pay bill forms, two forms that are similar to check forms or expense type forms, but they're going to be specifically tagged as like a pay bill type of form, which gives us a little bit more detail when we sort for the data, because it allows us to know that the other side is decreasing the accounts payable. That's what a pay bill form does. What does a pay bill form do? It decreases the accounts payable and the other side is usually going to the checking account or some kind of cash account or credit card account. So down here, we've got uh, the, the account balance. So that looks good. So let's go ahead and record it and then we'll check it out. So I'm going to say, save it. Let's say save and close. And then let's look at our financial statement. So I go back to the financials. I got to scroll up and make sure that I run the report again, refreshing it, holding down control, scrolling up a bit. If I go into the checking account, drilling down on the checking account, using the zoom feature, whatever they want to call it, holding control, scrolling down a bit. So I'm not 125. And then I'm going to go down and here's the, uh, the bill payments. So we've got two bill payments that we made two separate transactions, even though we did them basically at the same time, let's follow this one and then scroll down into the source document. So now we've got the bill payment form. It doesn't look exactly like the data input screen because now we're just showing this one item that we paid the bill for. So this is in essence, basically a check type of form or an expense form, whatever you want to call it. It's a form that typically decreases the checking account, but the other side is always going to uh, the accounts payable. So in other words, if it's a pay, if it's a payment of a bill, you can't really see where, what you bought until you go to the actual bill. I mean, you might be able to know by the, by the uh, vendor, but then you have to go to the actual bill to see the expense account that was hit. There's the utility. There's the utility uh, that was paid. Whereas if you were to open up an expense form or check form, then you could go directly to, obviously the expense would be on the form. Closing that out, I'm going to scroll back up and then go back to my, uh, uh, to the balance sheet and then scroll down to the accounts payable. I'm going to go into the accounts payable now. Notice that the accounts payable account is different than the cash account. It only goes up with bills and down with bill payment forms, which are basically check forms or an expense form, however you want to think of it. Whereas the cash account has all those different kinds of types of transactions. The cash account is unique in that way because the cash account is the lifeblood of the company. All other accounts are going to be severely limited to the types of transactions in them. The accounts payable only have two in types of transactions typically in them, bills increasing and bill payment, which are in essence check forms, as you can see here, uh, indicated by the check thing there that will be decreasing them. So closing this back out, I'm going to scroll back on up and go back to our, our report. Now we can also see this in the detailed report. So I've changed the accounts payable to 110267. If we go to the tab to all the way to the right and I refresh this report and say run it, then the AAA is totally gone up top. 
due to the fact that there's no outstanding bills. Now we might be able to refresh this report to see the detail even though there's a zero balance because the bill went in and was paid, but we'll dive into that later. Uh, right now, I just want to point out that the total down here, 110267, should tie out to what's on the balance sheet, 110267. In practice, we're probably not going to be looking at the report for the subledger, but rather trying to organize on the left hand side this information for the expense areas and the bills and whatnot. I'm going to open up the, the hamburger and the expenses tab so that we can facilitate the ease of the flow of the transactions, right? But we always want to note that what we're doing here, these open bills are basically tying out to the major balance sheet account of accounts payable. So now if I go to my expenses tab here, for example, I'm going to close up the hamburger. Uh, we can hit the drop down, and we can look at the bills. We can look at all, uh, all of them and then apply. So there's all the bills which includes that AAA bill. And then I can filter them back down to only the open ones, which is often what we're looking for. Now that AAA one is gone because we paid it. And then I could sort by just the overdue items, which are the ones that we really need to pay, you would think, right? And then I can go to the second tab, which is kind of filtering that out a little bit more quickly, unpaid items. So now the unpaid items are not including the, uh, the bill that we put in place. I can go to the vendor themselves. If I go to the vendor tab, I could sort up top for the open bills, for example. But I want I want to go into AAA directly here and see the increase and the decrease. So there's the there's the actual uh, check and there's the bill. So bill and then it, these two are basically tied together. If I go into the bill now, opening up the bill, it shows as paid, which is nice. And you have these nice links so if I go into here, we go, the, the, the date is uh, 1220 amount applied. So then if, if I close this back out, let's say if I go into that, there's the bill payment. So it links over, which is quite nice. Just closing this out. And if I go into the uh, bill payment and I want to see the connection here, there's the payment. I can tie this to the actual bill. Now notice if you learned accounting by debits and credits and like an accounting a school that was, you know, teaching just financial accounting, you probably learned debits and credits, and you might not have as much of an appreciation for the links between, between, say, a bill and a bill payment form, because you're just thinking, well, what's the impact on the financial statements in terms of, of the creation of the financial statements, because that's kind of like the focus oftentimes, when you're looking at it from just making the financial statements. But from the bookkeeping accounting side of things, the goal of facilitating the money flow transactions as easily as possible, you, that's why you want to use these forms. You don't want to just enter a journal entry that would be for the bill increase in accounts payable and the other side go into the expense. And then with the check form, you decrease accounts payable and the other side is going to uh, and you decrease the cash account, right? You don't want to do it with just a journal entry because you need the accounting software to be linking the fact that the bill is now closed and you could actually see it tied together being closed to the actual payment. You would like to be able to drill down from the financial statements down to the source document. And if your source document is a check, you would like to further link the check to the bill so you could see what the actual expense account was that was hit, which is on the bill and not on the check. So all these, these little links from a bookkeeping standpoint, if you've learned stuff from the bookkeeping side of things are, are things that are natural. You think this is the main thing that the accounting software does, of course, duh, facilitate transactions. But if you're on the accounting side of things and you learn the debit and credits without learning the bookkeeping, then you're probably just thinking, what's the impact on the financial statements and the debits and credits and may not be appreciating enough this little changes when I, in terms of the types of transactions and how all the transactions link together and the importance of having this transaction type here, telling us what kind of transaction we're using and the differences of what those transactions are doing and the capacity to go into these centers over here and organize our data in the event that we have a question from a vendor or something like that. So we can easily organize the data to answer the questions as problems arise. And just a quick look at the business view. So if I go to the cog up top and we switched this to the business view, 
then we have the same kind of activities under the business view. It's just a different kind of location. So if I start over at the get things done, which is in essence, the home page, then we've basically been working in the get paid and pay area, which if you think about this as a ribbon, you would think about that possibly as the tab. And then these are kind of the groups within here. We're going into the pay area, which is kind of like the vendor center kind of area. And then you've got your vendors where we see the uh, location we saw under the accounting view. And then you've got your bills down here. And that's where you have uh, your bills unpaid and the paid items. Now, the thing that's a little bit different here is that if you, you have to go under the bookkeeping down below to get to that expenses area. So if I go to the bookkeeping and then the transactions, and then I go to the expenses tab up there, that's where you have this area where you can kind of filter all of the transactions that are kind of like in the vendor cycle. So now this is where you've got that nice expenses, bills, and so on. And you could sort them such as sorting the bills and we were sorting the open bills and so on within here. So they kind of broke that one out into its own uh, little area here under the transactions and the bookkeeping tab. But like I say, they should have pretty much the same kind of stuff. It's just where did they put it? Uh, and so it's a it's a surface level changes that we're talking about typically and just the design of things. So don't don't get frustrated if they switch things up uh, with QuickBooks or if you prefer one view or the other view, you could figure out whichever one you want to use.